Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. You're going to see a few bugs in action as well as the after result of them being fixed. Let's start out with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 1989. You could not go into a single arcade in the late 80s, early 90s without running into this game, Simpsons, or even X-Men. All of course made by Konami. Great, great company. Way, way back to Castlevania, all the way up to games like TMNT and even more current like Silent Hill and such. But, uh, there's a bug that we have with this game, and you're going to see it in a moment here, but, uh, essentially, them custom OSTs such as OutRun, NBA Jam, Final Fight, Mortal Kombat, and so on, watch what happens here when I go to start the game. There's a sample bug where it doesn't exactly know when it's supposed to start or stop, and watch what happens, uh, right here. The theme song is supposed to start right here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant, fill in the blanks. This is definitely a bug that needs addressed and fixed accordingly. But in any case, we're going to move on to a few more bugs. So you're seeing a little bit of the process here. And I consider this the, uh, the butterfly mod effect, where we essentially step on a butterfly in the United States and Godzilla destroys Tokyo as a result. Now I've watched, like, the Aston Kutcher, uh, butterfly effect movies as well. Very, very cool stuff. But right now we're going to load another game that has a little bit of a bug. It is, uh, none other than the Disc of Tron. The great, great uh, arcade game, and this has a bug where when you start it up, it is completely mirrored. The graphics are backwards, the controls are backwards. And I did show you kind of uh, two workarounds you could use for this, but somebody who just wants to turn on their system and play the game, they shouldn't have to worry about these workarounds. Right now, the graphics are completely backwards. It says Disc of Tron in some foreign language, but really it's just backwards in a mirror. I'm going to go to start the game here. And uh, when I go to control it, when I push left, I'm going to be moving uh, right, and when I push right, I'm going to be moving left. That's not at all going to suffice for playing a game. So let's try this out for a moment here. And there are roughly a dozen plus games that have this issue. See, I'm moving uh, left and moving right and moving right to move left. This is not at all playable at all. I mean... There were a couple of things that I showed you you could do in the past, like you could go into uh, the shaders, and you could go to low shader preset, and I have a nifty one here where you could actually reverse it, flip horizontal mirror, just like that, and apply, and then it's uh, in the right direction, just like that. That's how easy it is. But I'm going to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to go back, I'm going to low shader preset, and I'm going to go back to the stock GLSLP. And then I'm going to exit, and we're going to go over a couple more bugs while we're here. There are uh, some tremendously amazing shmups that have added uh, support in MAME 2003 stream in the past. I'm going to show you these right now. One's an Ultraman-esque game. You'll see it right now. Called Ultra X Weapons, and uh, this game is fantastic, but it has a nasty music bug. I mean, you're going to hear what I mean. It almost sounds like sound blips and farts in the music as I play it. And again, uh, anytime you make something like a change, you always have to take into consideration you might essentially be having a mod butterfly effect, as I mentioned. So by working in the custom OSTs, we ended up getting a sample bug with uh, games like TMNT. But the good news is it is now fixed. I mean, Grant 2258 helped fix it up, and it is much, much better now. But listen to this music. It is... Terrible. It is a uh, really, really glitchy. You'll hear when I start the game here. Right there. There's a lot of blips and beeps and stuff. That is bad. Really, really muffled blip and beep and all that. Not at all the way you want to experience this great shmup game. And this is some incredibly cool hardware. It's a combination of uh, the company seed, uh Visco, and of course, Sammy, who also worked with uh, SNK on the Neo Geo hardware, especially the Atomus Wave hardware. Uh, we're going to load one other game that is of the subset right now, called Stormblade, and this is an SSV hardware game. Then we're going to go into one more, uh, kind of a performance bug after this, and then I'm going to update the core with some of these changes that are going to rectify and completely fix these. But you're going to hear the really, really atrocious... Muffled, horrible music right here, too. So, yes, the sound is fixed on these SSV games. One thing you might have noticed in the past is that MAME 2003 
Extreme tends to have better performance and speed than the other main 2003 chords, especially on the mini S NES. Look at it, that is terrible! I can't take that, I cannot take that at all, that is bad. But yes, MAME 2003 Extreme uh, typically has better performance and speed on the Mini NES, SNES, and of course even the Retro Pie. But guess what? With the update, it's going to have even better performance. I'm going to give you a perfect before and after example of this right now. I'm going to play a game that is incredibly hard to run on the Mini. One that is uh, just completely stubborn. It's called Grid Seeker Project Stormhammer from 1992. This is a title F3 hardware game. It is essentially hardware along the lines of uh, Sega Saturn and, of course, PlayStation 1. And most of these games that are even remotely near hardware configuration and specs of the PlayStation 1 or, of course, the Sega Saturn do not at all run well on the minis. But uh, I've already done a little bit of performance upgrade on this, and you're going to see it as it is right now. But it's going to be even better once I update the core. We're going to try it out for a moment here and see how playable this is. This is pretty bad, but it's actually better than uh, it could be. It could even run worse than this. But you can see there's definitely an issue here. And if you play this on another core, it runs even slower than this. So, I mean, it is abysmal. Okay, so what we're going to do now is actually shut the system down. I'm running uh, nearly 200 games in my lineup here, so what I'm going to actually do is go to power down the system, and I would recommend only keeping 30 to 35 games per folder, otherwise you might end up getting a C8 error on your shutdown. Watch what happens. I'm going to get a C8 error, because I have way too many games, so I'm going to power back on, and then off. The problem is if you get one too many of these C8 errors, you're going to end up having corruption on your flash drive and or hard drive. So I'm going to connect it to the computer right now. And I typically do a disc check. It is very, very crucial to do disc checks every once in a while. I mean, if you run 30 to 35 games, you're unlikely to run into C8 errors. I mean, even if you have the C8 deterrent H mod, it's going to help out to a degree. But I'm going to unmount the drive right now. And I'm going to verify it because I am running EXT4. That is my personal, uh, personal format that I prefer to use. And I use this for both the PlayStation Classic and the Mini NES and SNES. But I'm verifying that, and then I'm going to update the main core with the changes that are going to fix all the bugs that I just showed you. And there are quite a few of them that were fixed. I mean, I give huge personal thanks to Arcades, Grand 2258, GP Star, and of course, uh, Mark W. Kid. I mean, they're all great, fantastic people I work with and collaborate on a regular basis. And again, it is like the Mod Butterfly Effect. There are three main 2003 cores in my set. We have the standard one, which is for peers, ones that don't want to have to worry too much and just get into the game. Then, of course, we have, uh, I have no corruption right now, so I'm good. I'm going to remount it. And I'm going to use, instead of Hashi, which I would normally have to connect my computer uh, to the Mini, I'm just going to go into the main that I updated right here. I just uh, put it aside in my update here. And I'm going to copy that right into Hashi, and I'm going to create a transfer folder. You can do this on your uh, USB host. You just create a transfer folder and copy the HMOD in there. And the problem is if you have hard drive corruption and don't fix it, this is not going to work. I'm going to show you what happens. Now I'm going to make sure that I uh, completely unmount the drive. You don't want to just uh, unplug it. It's not a good idea. You want to always unmount it. Or safely remove it if it's a Windows drive. So for XT4, I would use this Linux file system program since I am on Windows to mount and unmount it and of course verify it. But if I'm using a normal NTFS or FAT32 drive, I use the simple uh, safely remove hardware on Windows itself. But now that I have it safely removed, I'm going to reboot up the system. And I should get a double hashy splash screen to signify that it installed properly. So I'm going to boot up now. And you should see the Hashi logo two times. Okay, here's our first time. It should disappear. And again, if you have corruption, it's just going to do it one time and not install what you tried to install. I'm going to get a second install right here. And then we're going to go through all the bugs that I just showcased a few minutes ago. 
and you're going to see that they are actually completely fixed. Then I'm going to showcase some of the enhancements, improvements, performance, and speed upgrades that are going into the core for the next update as well. So the first game we tested out was TMNT. We're going to play that again because we need to have our TMNT theme song, without a doubt. Okay. So we're going to get into the game and uh, see if we have that theme song again, which we should have now with the code in. And they always say when you go to school... Uh, math isn't a matter, but there's a lot of math and formulas involved in a lot of this, uh, process. I mean, it's just what it is. So we're gonna start the game here. Now, I always like using Donatello. And we should get our, uh, typical theme song right now. It should be fixed. And we got liftoff. Never ever get sold. Now we're going to move on to the other games that have bugs. We're going to do uh, Disc of Tron next. That was the next one I showcased. And this is a pretty tremendous update for MAME 2003 Extreme. I mean, in more ways than you could ever realize. You'll see a few of these right now, but we're doing uh, Disc of Tron again. And now it should load uh, right side up. I mean, and the control should be normal too. I should be able to see the graphics completely non-mirrored. Again, this affects over a dozen games, so it's definitely something that needed fixed. Awesome. And our controls should be completely fixed as well. Okay, let's check out these controls. And you might remember, for those of you who have been uh, following me for the last two years, that some of the earlier things that I got into MAME 2003 Extreme War games such as uh, System 32 Sega games, such as Spider-Man Arcade. Yep, I got perfect controls right now. No problem moving whatsoever. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But yes, the Sega System 32 games were tremendously amazing to have in MAME 2003 Extreme. And they were one of the very first things that I needed to have implemented. And uh, there's a little bit of a loophole, uh, kind of an exploit I was able to do to get those to work way, way back. But uh, right now we're going to load up Ultra X Weapons. And we should have appropriate sound now. Again, this is the SSV hardware. We're going to go into a, a few different hardware configurations for arcade games that are fixed up, I mean. Because we already have iRealm encryption fixes, Data East encryption fixes. Then, of course, we have uh, the Nintendo Verse ones, which I showcased a couple months ago. And now we have SSV ones right here, which I'm showing you right now. You're going to hear Ultra X weapons with much, much better sound. And anytime you say Bande or Band Presto, you got a good game no matter what. They're all good games. So we should have way better music. I'm going to turn up a little bit now. And how many of you remember that 1970s uh, Ultraman TV show that was live action that had the character that was a little bit like Godzilla that it took on? The music is flawless now. No problem whatsoever with the music. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So very, very playable. Very thoroughly impressed there. Again, a uh, huge thanks to Grant2258 for helping out with this. Makes me feel like I'm watching the old Ultraman uh, TV series and the Godzilla movies and all that and fun stuff. Then we're going to move on to the other game that had issues. We had uh, Stormblade, which also had really, really bad sound. So bad that I had to stop the game the moment I started playing it. It was just like uh, scratching on a chalkboard with Freddy Krueger nails and such. And there's a whole other subset of games that are going to be uh, improved with this update as well. Because you're going to get uh, roughly 15 to 20%. Performance and speed upgrade on many many games and you're gonna get a widespread 100% core uh, performance speed upgrade as well, but let's check this out And this should be uh, much much better for sound and not just uh, scratch your eardrums Good the sounds working flawlessly very very happy here So SSV games are fixed TMNT is fixed Disc of Tron is fixed. We got 444. They're awesome stuff. And sometimes uh, these things aren't that easy to fix. I mean, it could take many, many different compiles and builds and a lot of testing. I mean, the Amiga testing took a couple of days to get right. I mean, that was a, a nasty 
phenomenon going on there. Okay, we're gonna move on to the other game that I showcased. We're gonna do that Grid Seeker game again, which again is a title F3 game. And we're gonna get uh, roughly a 15% performance upgrade here. I mean, right off the bat, core-wise, and the game should run better as a result. And you're gonna be able to play many of these title F3 games. I mean, they're very, very stubborn, but you're gonna be able to play them much better than ever before. And I'm gonna go over a few of these right in a row. And I did mention I'm gonna cover some title games, date these games, and so on. Okay, let's check this game out and see how it fares compared to a few minutes ago. And this is one of the tougher run games. Much more approachable than a few minutes ago. And I'm really loving the double bass drum style soundtrack here. Definitely much more playable. And you're gonna have a few periods where you have a little bit of slowdown, other periods where it runs pretty nicely. Right now it's running pretty good. But I'm really, really digging this double bass drum style soundtrack. And there's another, another beautiful game that I'm going to showcase for Nintendo F3 hardware as well. We've all wanted to be able to run Sega Saturn games on our system, and this game is actually ported from the arcade to Sega Saturn, and it runs pretty nicely with this update with my testing. Is uh, right here. Get Karen, get then. There we go, from 1995. This game runs pretty nicely with the update here. Again, I'm able to get like a roughly 15 to 20 percent performance speed upgrade because there's a recalculation of the refresh rate, and as a result, we're getting better frame per second. And multiple games are fixed, and uh, you're gonna be able to play Robocop better. You might not have noticed before, but if you actually would have had a lot of scrutiny and paid very, very close attention to Robocop, it never played well. But now it plays near perfectly. And you'll see it when you play the update on this uh, main 2003 Extreme. Right here we're playing an actual arcade game that is also on the Sega Saturn. It is a beautiful, beautiful game. Now I'm really, really digging the overall gameplay uh, scenario, the uh, graphics, the music. It has a great soundtrack to boot here. Very nice. You don't even want to see how bad this game normally runs without the performance upgrade and tweaks. It runs bad. We'll get a little bit into this and we'll try a few more games because uh, there's a good half dozen of these that, that are require playing staples in your collection without a doubt. And another bonus is uh, System 32 Sega games are actually going to run better. So, uh, Stuff like Go Next 2, uh, Death Adder, and of course uh, Spider-Man the Arcade game are going to run much better than ever before. And Night Slashers, uh, the Data East game, even runs better now too. So this game is running uh, phenomenally well. I'm very, very happy now. It feels like I'm truly running a Sega Saturn game for the first time on my Mini. Not bad at all. Now we're going to try a few other uh, title F3 games because again we're going to be showcasing some more title games. And uh, they have one that people have asked me about uh, multiple times. I fixed it up before, but now it's running even better. We're talking about Elevator Action Returns. And for those of you who have tried running this before, it runs pretty god awful. I've got it running pretty decent before. But now there's a little bit of a recalculation of the refresh rate, and it's running much, much better as a result. You'll see right now, the music is actually presentable. The gameplay is pretty pristine, considering. Okay, let's check it out. We just need to have Outfoxies running. I mean, we have Outfoxies, but there is no sound for it. The game runs great on MAME 2003, but some games like the Namco uh, Volume uh, 1 and 2 that run on here, the arcade collections, have issues on MAME 2003 along with the uh, Outfoxies. But this game right here, luckily, is great, great, great here and it's running quite well. The music is very presentable, I have no trouble controlling it. Nice frame rate right now. Running better than it has before when I improved it before. Oops. <laughs> 
Give me my elevator here. There we go. Now I suck at this game, as you can see. Kind of like a little bit of a Rolling Thunder style gameplay here, which you never ever get, so them are always fun to play. I got this. Yeah, we definitely need to have some outfoxies to go along with this great elevator action returns. But we have a few more Title F3 games to showcase, and one of them is spectacular, and I'm going to show you right now. And you might see me do a lot of uh, turbo fire in my games. Uh, just watch what I do right now. I'm going to load it up right now. It is called Arabian Fight. Not Arabian Fight, sorry. Arabian Magic. Arabian Fight is Sega System 32. Let's not get confused right now. These are two entirely different games, but they're both great side-scrolling brawlers. We're going to play a title F3 Arabian Magic first. And typically I try enabling turbo fire, but this is a little bit different. It's kind of funny in a way, if you try enabling turbo fire, it'll actually do the same thing that a pinball machine will do if you try tilting it too much. It'll actually air out the game. Just watch what happens when I start the game here. <laughs> I'm going to try to do turbo fire once I start the game, but it's not going to work. I'm going to hold down the attack button and push select. Coin one air, look at that. Well, when I restart the game, watch what happens. I'll have my turbo fire. That is cool. It's almost like they uh, had a little bit of a safety mechanism in the arcade to prevent people from putting too many coins in a machine at once. Not like anybody would start putting 20 quarters into an arcade machine at one time. But this game is phenomenally cool, and I'm very, very happy with this. I mean, I love Arabian Fight and Arabian Magic. Now I'm still uh, not completely sold on the Aladdin remake that's coming out. I mean, uh, I do love the original with Robin Williams. I've probably seen that more than any other Disney movie, and it's probably one of my favorite animated Disney movies. And most of the time, I, I'm more of a horror buff. I'm more into horror movies than animated movies. Okay. Let's at least get to one of the first bosses here. But fantastic game of Arabian Magic here. And you can see it's playing quite nicely with this performance update. And it does have a nice two-player mode activate. And there's also another uh, upgrade for MAME 2003 Plus as well. I'm going to be doing a separate video on that. And I'm going to do my best to get this uh, update out within the next few days. There's some nice uh, surprises. You're going to see some very, very cool stuff that I've actually broached upon in the past. Yeah, this is a classic game, without a doubt. And we got our magic ability. Definitely a cool game. And let's see what else we have here. We have a great uh, dungeon crawler gauntlet style game as well, which is also uh, requested quite often. We're talking about Dungeon Master, aka Lightbringer. We're going to play that right now. And you can see in the release notes uh, some of these games that are for the uh, Title F3 hardware as well as the SSV hardware. Right now we're doing Dungeon Magic, aka Lightbringer. Again, you're going to have uh, countless updates to this core for this update. Now I'm going to have them all in the release notes, as well as a few description notes in this video as you watch it. But yes, uh, Sega System 32 games all run better. You're going to get better data East games, and there are even more encryption fixes for IRAM games. I mean, they run even better. I mean, the sample rate is even better and more uh, authentic to the original arcade version. So when you start loading up In the Hunt and many countless other uh, IRAM games, they're going to be running way, way better now. Now, I'm still doing some more Irem uh, videos, of course. But here we have another great dungeon crawler. Diablo Gauntlet style, of course. One game that I'd like to be able to get working better is Gaiopolis. One of my favorite uh, Gauntlet style games on the uh, arcade, period. If you haven't played Gaiopolis, it is a must play. 
But yes, this game is very, very cool stuff here. Another two-player mode activate game. But yes, this and Elevator Action Returns are two of the most requested games that people have asked me about. And uh, you can see they're both running quite considerably better than ever before right now. So very, very happy here. And we're not done yet. We have another game too for you shmup fanatics out there. We have a Darius Gaiden game, which is very, very cool stuff. I'm going to load that up for a moment here. Darius Gaiden Silverhawk, another game that was very, very stubborn, and uh, I love the Darius games, especially the latest one on PlayStation 4. I mean, it has over a thousand levels in it. Probably the best $40 I ever spent on day one, and the game goes on sale quite often. Definitely pick it up for your Vita or your PS4 if you ever have a chance to pick it up. It is well worth the effort, and the soundtrack is an insanely cool. Okay, awesome stuff here. It's kind of like the butterfly effect. I'm also a big, big fan of movies like Wishmaster, 1, 2, even the luster, more than the lackluster ones, 3 and 4, which do not have Andrew Divoff in them. I mean, Andrew Dr Divoff was actually a phenomenal Wishmaster character. I love watching him in a lot of stuff way back. He was even in Air Force One with Harrison Ford, as well as the Highlander TV, TV series. He always plays recurrent villain roles. I mean, just like Clancy Brown, of Highlander fame. I mean, these are guys that are completely typecast into villainous roles. I, I'm another actor I like like that is Michael Ironside, who uh, started out in V, kind of as a villain style character. You hardly ever see him in anything but a villain role either. I remember that Dean Arcoon's uh, uh, book turned the movie with uh, Jason Priestley in it, uh, Corey Haim, and of course uh, it had uh, Michael Ironside as the government agent that was after him. Uh, listen to this amazing soundtrack there. But I did just watch another horror movie uh, the other day. It's actually called The Final Wish, and it's by the people who worked on Final Destination. It has a few elements of the Wishmaster series, but uh, not quite up to par with Wishmaster. I really want to go back and watch the first two with Andrew Divoff again, because they're such really, really fun movies. I love those movies, and uh, there are quite a few uh, guest appearances from other horror icons in the movie, which I'm not going to spoil if you haven't watched it yet, but... Uh, Darius Gaiden is running quite nicely here. Now, we got time for a few more games here. Let's see what else we have to showcase right now. Oh, yeah, we have one other huge, huge, tremendous change, which I'm very, very happy about. We'll go over this right now. Uh, Vector Games uh, never, for the last 20 years, ever looked proper. They look amazing and beautiful right now. I'm going to play Tempest, and it has completely fixed vector graphics. You're going to see it right now. It's going to be bold, vibrant, and glorious, and beautiful, and uh, you're going to be able to play this with the update. It looks better than it ever has before. I mean, it's just mind-blowingly cool. And there's a little bit of a graphical tweak you can do to this well, but look how amazing this looks. Whenever you play vector games, I would highly recommend going into uh, RetroArch Video Settings and do this mainly for the vector games. I'm going to enable bilinear filtering. You're not going to lose your lines at all. It's actually going to make them uh, more pristine looking. Just watch. Look how beautiful that looks. I mean, it is just beautiful. It looks like neon light in it. It is cool as hell. That is a beautiful thing indeed. And I'm very, very happy. When I had the Atari Flashback Collection on my PlayStation 4, I did the Platinum Trophy. And I'd have to say the hardest level was doing, I believe it was like level 84, and you had to do the entire stage without dying a single time. That was incredibly difficult. But yep, these Vector games run phenomenally well, and uh, they look better than ever before. I mean, it is just mind-blowing right now. Wait till you play Tron and stuff. Yes, this is beautiful indeed. We just need to have the Atari Jaguar version of Tempest uh, 2000 running full speed ahead on the mini without a doubt. Right now I'm going to turn off bilinear filter because I'm not going to need it. And there's one other huge change. Uh, one of the last changes I'm going to showcase for this video. You know those uh, pesky midway ballet games that always had issues? I mean, I had them running with MAME 2003 Extreme, but I did a change uh, that Grant2258 helped me out with, and uh, no matter which retro arc you run, you're going to be able to run games like... Uh, Tapper now. I mean, you might have tried loading Tapper on MAME 2003 before, and it never ever worked, but guess what? It's gonna work now for you no matter which 
uh, Retroarch you use. It's going to work on uh, Retroarch Extreme, Retroarch Neo, or even Clusters Retroarch. This is the change that I made for the better. Uh, and Grand2358 helped me out with this. And uh, we have a board you can run midway battle games no matter which Retroarch you're on. And it was uh, due to a refresh bug. And by recalculating the refresh rate, you're actually appropriately able to load and play these games now. Very, very cool game. And uh, we might have time to showcase one more game after this. We all need to have our uh, share of Tapper and Root Bear Tapper. And of course, you can play games like Rampage and Journey and all that fun stuff as well. But look, we got Tapper running perfectly, no matter which retro arc you run. But obviously, stuff uh, like in my core set is going to be more optimal and uh, speed and performance enhanced if you run it with Retroarch Extreme. But uh, if you run a different Retroarch, you're still going to be able to run Tapper. We're going to do one more game today. Let's find one more special game. We're going to do Spider-Man uh, video game. And it actually has a performance upgrade. It's going to run full speed ahead without any kind of BS whatsoever now. This game was kind of hit and miss at times. I've worked with it a few times, but now it's running near flawlessly. You'll see it for yourself. Winners don't use drugs. <laughs> and this is again one of my favorite arcade games. <laughs> Much better. Full speed ahead. So with the update, you're gonna be able to play this game from beginning to end. Now, four player mode activate. Full speed ahead. I think we probably have a couple more minutes. Maybe I'll showcase a few more improvements that I noticed in uh, te uh, testing, of course. And I'm still just a little bit sick. That is one of the reasons why I didn't get the update just yet. I mean, there's a lot of sickness going around. But I'm doing my best to recover and get this stuff out for you guys and gals. But we're going to exit back and we're going to do a couple more test examples real quick. Okay, we're going to see how Night Slashers runs now. Another game that was a little bit problematic in the past. This is a definite game you want to play, and I'd highly recommend playing the Japanese version. Because unlike with Splatterhouse, where you have green blood, you actually have red blood in this game if you play the Japanese version. So here we go, uh, red blood mode activate. You always need to have your red blood in your games like Metal Slug, and of course, uh, Night Slashers, but unfortunately... In uh, Spider House, you do not have red blood until you get to the later games in the series. Okay, let's see how well this runs. Look at that, that is awesome. There's normally slowdown in this part, it's running perfectly now. That is a nice solid improvement from the last few updates. Get us a recalculation of the refresh rate, and as a result, the frame per second is more stabilized. So you have uh, an entire core-wise uh, performance and speed uh, boost here, as a result. So try your games, uh, ones that were stubborn before, and you're going to see a little bit of uh, a significant improvement on quite a few of them. This is definitely a game that you want to be able to have run at full speed ahead, as much as humanly possible. Definitely much, much better with the red blood mode activate. Beautiful game, uh, definitely worth checking out. Now we're going to load up one of the custom OSTs, and uh, yes, the custom OSTs actually benefit as well. Outrun specifically uh, benefits, as you will see here. Outrun, and we're doing the custom OST right now for Outrun. If you have any difficulty running the custom OSTs, you're welcome to ask me in the comments and I'll do my best to help you along. But many of you have already acclimated to these and I've been running them for months now. And of course it is always tremendously difficult to determine which of the six custom OSTs I like the most from uh, Final Fight to Mortal Kombat, NBA Jam, Double Dragon, and of course OutRun and Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. I cannot determine which I like the most but uh... Listen to this crazy, crazy cool incidental music with impeccable timing right now. Check it out. That is beautiful indeed. Never get sold. Truly makes me feel like I'm back in the 1980s, 90s, watching some of them earlier. Was Craven Moves and such. 
Well, let's get the show on the road and play this for a moment now. And there's also a performance boost on this game because the uh, slowdown that typically occurs at the beginning of the stage is very, very minimal now. And digging this uh, Janhammer Miami Vice uh, style soundtrack going on here. Okay. We got this. Really, really loving this soundtrack. Remember, I showed you one thing you could do before uh, with the Retroarch Extreme. You could go into shaders here. Low shader preset, and this is always fun to do here. Think of Pac-Man and Blinky. Look at his awesomeness. That is truly psychedelic. Goes perfect with a night of a uh, Pineapple Express. And this works great on games like Super Mario Brothers as well. I mean, it is really cool. And again, when you're done doing this effect, uh, this nifty effect there, you can change back to the uh, default stock uh, GLSLP, which I'll show you how to do here. Shaders. Low shader preset, and you go back to the stock GOSLP, and apply, and you're good to go. And we're going to do one more final game, another Visco masterpiece here, that you're going to be able to run with the update, and uh, it's going to run with much better sound. And there are quite a few of these games. It is a Vesera 2, I and mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful game. If you like games like uh, Cave Schmups, you're going to be right at home with this. I mean, Visco made some tremendously great ones. And Vesera 1 and 2 are two of these. So here's the final game of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, you'll be enjoying the update within a few days, guys and gals. Okay, let's get this show on the road for our final demonstration. And of course, we're going to play the difficult 12 stage uh, run through here. This also has a really, really nifty soundtrack. Turn the volume up just a little bit here. Another game that has fixed sound. This music here is uh, very, very cool. It reminds me a lot of uh, the one of my favorite shmup soundtracks ever. Uh, of course, Dragon Spirit by Namco. Really, really is reminiscent of that style of soundtrack. But uh, this game definitely fits in with the mode of Cave Schmuff right now. Look at them Terminator style heads. That is just cool stuff, indeed. One can never have enough Schmuffs. Or let alone arcade games. But again, I'm going to detail many of these games that you're going to be able to run with the update. And these performance and speed tweaks and enhancements and upgrades. And the release notes, of course. For those of you who want to peruse them. And of course, if you go into the extras arcade folder, you're going to have all the documentation on many of the compatibility updates for the uh, main 2003 Extreme and Plus cores. That is cool. Some Gundam stuff going on there. And yes, there are some Gundam games that work with the update as well. On the SSV hardware. With better sound than all that jazz. But well, I hope you enjoyed the video and it, uh, the update will be out in a few days if everything goes well.